okay, fourth and fifth grade. This week we're gonna be uh, drawing and shading a pumpkin to kind of carry forward with what we learned last week. So you're gonna need um, just a pencil, an eraser, and a clean, dry Kleenex today. Um, sometimes it does help if you have a picture to look at. I printed this one offline, and I actually think it's better to look at it in black and white because then you can really see the darks and lights and um, I kind of outlined it just so I would know what I was looking at, but you're welcome to follow along with me and just draw it like I'm drawing it if you, if you don't want to look at a picture. So here we go. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is we're going to start with the center of the pumpkin. Okay, so you're going to make an oval in the center of the little paper. Okay, and from there, here we go. We're going to draw the stem. I know, I like that it's early for the stem. So I'm gonna make kind of a crooked stem. Doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Okay, so the top of the stem, and then I'm gonna go ahead and have the stem come around and kind of curve. Okay, put a little oval at the bottom. Okay, so now I have the stem. Feel free to pause the video if I'm going too fast. Okay, from there I'm gonna continue to draw the sections of my pumpkin. So I'm gonna draw kind of a C shape, backward C. Okay, I'm gonna make another one. And pumpkins are just kind of funny by nature. You know, they're all just kind of shaped different and you get all different kinds. So if yours is not looking exactly like mine, that's totally fine. Because this one may not look exactly like the one that I drew earlier. Because I am going kind of fast. This is kind of fast for me. Okay, I think it looks a little whoppy jawed. So I may bring this line down just a little bit farther and this one out just a little bit more. And that's totally okay to look at it and be like, mm, that doesn't look exactly right. Let me see what I can do. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down. All right, so now last week we talked about darks and lights and how when things um, are together, okay, when you have something smashed together, you're gonna have a darker shadow in between it. Okay, so what we're gonna start with is kind of our darkest dark areas, just darkening those up. And so first of all, between your stem and your pumpkin, it's gonna be pretty dark. That's gonna be catching a shadow. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of put that dark, dark area in. The other is where the sections of the pumpkin are meeting. That's gonna be pretty dark. So I'm gonna go over those sections. And we talked about when something is round, the edges are always darker, the middle is lighter because that's gonna catch the light because it sticks out further. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're, as you're shading. All right, now we're gonna assume that this pumpkin is not flying through the air. Okay, even though I used to live in a little town my first year teaching where the kids would go pumpkin bowling, and that was something I had never heard of, um, quite interesting, but we are not, this pumpkin is not being used for pumpkin bowling. It is sitting, we're going to assume, um, on a table. So, we're going to catch a shadow underneath the pumpkin, so go ahead and put that dark section in. Where it's gonna meet the table and I know I'm going fast I am still not happy with that I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down a little bit okay now it looks like to me in the picture that I was looking at that the Sun is really coming or hitting kind of the top in this side of the pumpkin so I'm gonna focus on shading this side a little bit more with my medium tones and then We'll kind of blend and we can pull out some of the, the lighter areas. First of all, I know that this bottom part of my stem 
is not going to get as much light because it's kind of tipped toward the bottom. So I'm going to put a shadow there. So I'm just taking my pencil, kind of coloring it in right there. And I kind of widened that because it looked a little bit squirrely to me. Aren't y'all glad it's fall? I am loving this weather. weather. Okay, so I am going to just add some texture in on my vine. And when we blend that in a little bit, we'll have to pull those back out again. All right, let's see. Now, I really kind of would like for this harsh line that's going to be on the lighter side to disappear a little bit. Like, she just erased her line. Why did she do that? So I'm going to kind of go back with just a softer shaded line on that side. And I'm going to do the same thing up here because I just want it to look lighter and kind of soft. Same thing for the top of my stem. Just going to kind of shade it. Shade it. I want to soften that line a little bit. And again, we talked about this in class last week. I was like, I have to turn my paper when I shade. And a lot of the kids were like, yeah, me too. I can only go in a certain direction. So that's totally okay. Okay, I'm gonna add a little more shading in right here. Now, I don't know that this side of the pumpkin is gonna catch quite as much light. So instead of erasing that line, I'm just gonna shade in. Because remember, circles or spheres Things that are round, they don't really have distinct edges. It's, we're trying to make it look three-dimensional. Okay, let's see. So, next to my dark lines that are separating my sections, I'm going to shade kind of a middle value. I don't know if y'all are able to see that. But I want to go ahead and get my, my middle value in. Sorry, my camera is shaky. I got a new camera holder, and it's on a spring. And I really like it because you can turn it all different directions, but it's wobbly. <laughs> when you touch it, it shakes for a minute. So, okay. Let me put my mid value in. Okay, now in a minute, we're going to blend this, and we're just going to kind of see where we're at what it looks like and then we can make changes as we need to. I'm gonna leave this out a little wider. Now I know the bottom is gonna catch a little bit more shade down here. Shade that in a little bit and I know I'm going fast. I know I'm going fast. For two reasons because nobody it takes a really long time to download a long video. And also, I know that Miss Linkford is about to come on with the af Friday afternoon announcements and play the crazy music. And I don't want to have to pause. Okay. I'm also going to put in a middle value kind of shadow underneath here. Kind of just to give me a little bit of just some something, the appearance that it is not suspended in air, that we are in fact not going pumpkin bowling here. This pumpkin is sitting somewhere on a table, and you can get creative with that if you want to. If you want to draw on the top of the table, you can. I'm not going to go there today. Okay, let's see about my stem. I may need to shade in maybe this side of the stem a little bit. Maybe this side just a little bit more. All right, I think I'm ready to kind of start blending and just see where I'm at. Now, the thing is, after you blend, you're going to have to come back and add in a lot of your darks again. And you're also going to have to pull out some of your lights with your eraser. And that's just the process. Okay, so remember, we don't want to use our finger because our finger has oil. If you have a blending stump at home, then I would use that. But if you don't, just put a Kleenex over your finger. And we're not really wiping. We don't want to just wipe the paper. We want to be kind of strategic about where we're blending. Okay. I just want to really smooth it, first of all, and get kind of that middle tone in there. Okay. And I 
gotta be careful on this. This is where a blending stump would really come in handy because my finger's just a little bit too big. I mean, if you get out of the lines, you can always just go back and clean it up with your eraser. That's really not a big deal. Blend this down here a little bit. Oops. Okay, so now let's see kind of what I think. I think I might pull out a little bit of light. If you have a kneaded eraser, those are the stretchy gummy erasers. What's neat is you can make them into a point, a really pointy point, and you're able to erase in almost a straight line, which is really fun. Um, I think I'm gonna try this eraser because it's a little bit thinner. It hasn't been used as much. I might go ahead and start pulling out some streaks of light. And I need to clean up that section right there. Okay. I think this is going to catch a little light up here, so I'm going to pull some out and pull out in the center. Okay, let's see how I'm doing. A little bit of light right there, maybe just a little right there. All right. I don't know how you're feeling about that. I think I could probably sit here and work on this for a really long time, just trying to get it perfect, but. Um, I'm going to add in a few lines for details. You know those lines you see on pumpkins? Some pumpkins are really lumpy and bumpy, and you can add in those details with your shading. Um, I'm not going to add just a ton of detail because, again, I want to keep this video on, on the shorter side. But what I would do is just kind of look at where you're at, um, where you think you need to add more darks, um, where you think you need to pull out more light. Again, if you look at a picture, it might help you a little bit more, or you're welcome to follow along or just eyeball it and kind of think about it. Um, I hope you guys have fun drawing this pumpkin. I definitely want to see how you did, so feel free to email it to me, or if you can upload it to Artsonia, that's awesome because then everyone's able to view it and enjoy it if it's not set to private. Um, I love drawing with you guys always. Don't forget, sign your work. And I always tell kids, put the date because your parents definitely want to look back and see how old you were when you drew it. All 